Hey guys, this is Bharat and welcome to Bharat's Kitchen with Domino's Deep Dish Pizza, which you can easily make at home. Now I know I should have posted earlier as it's the cover photo of my YouTube channel, but still better late than never. And when you watch the video, you'll find that making deep dish pizza is actually very simple. It's the same recipe. It's the same pizza recipe. It's just that with the baking tin, you can make a difference. Okay, so let's begin with it. So first we're going to make our dough for the pizza and if you've seen my Domino's cheese burst pizza recipe then it's exactly the same and you can skip the video to 4 minute mark otherwise in a bowl i'm going to first add some warm water not very hot not very cold but warm water and to this add some yeast now i'm using instant yeast but if you want to use active dry yeast then you'll find more information about it on my website all right further you're going to give some food to the yeast which in my case is brown sugar and i'm using brown sugar because it's got molasses now molasses just helps to retain more moisture which in turn will make the bread more softer and if you don't have brown sugar use your normal sugar it won't make a huge difference but whatever you do make sure you first bloom the yeast looks cool isn't it okay when your yeast is alive then add some saturated fat which in my case is desi ghee and i know what you're going to say but it's not desi bhature it's italian pizza within why are you using desi ghee in a pizza dough <laughs> well commercially hydrogenated garlic flavored butter oil big words is used basically since it's saturated it helps the bread to retain more moisture and stuff like palm oil or hydrogenated oil or dalda is basically not that good for your health something which is much better is desi ghee which is basically ca- clarified butter or you can use even your normal butter but i feel it's much better to use this now at this point add some salt and just like my earlier pizza base recipe you need to add some milk powder now this is totally optional but it enhances the result further add in some all purpose flour or maida and that's it now first i'm going to start with combining the dough and when it all comes together we need to knead it so i've just transferred my dough to a flat surface and don't get me wrong but you need to knead the dough for at least 15 minutes to get good results and while kneading the dough you might feel that it's a little on the sticky side and that's how we want the dough to be that is a little soft and when you look closely or when you stretch it you can see that it's got that gluten structures which is the key here All right in the end i'm going to pour a little bit of oil to manage the dough and let it rest for about 1 hour in a warm place and make sure you cover the dough otherwise it'll dry out let's go and after 1 hour you can see that it's doubled its size and it's become quite together it's soft but not that sticky so this is the time to divide the dough into equal proportions apply a little bit of oil and make sure you roll the dough balls to smooth now cover the dough with a cling wrap or a clean film and let the balls proof for 30 to 45 minutes and in the meanwhile let's prepare the other stuff that we're going to need so first I've chopped some veggies but if you want to use any other topping of your own choice you can definitely go ahead and the topping that I have used are these Now as I've told you earlier commercially the main flavoring element is hydrogenated garlic flavored butter oil and I know you don't have it at your home So let's make a replacement for it. In a bowl, I've taken some refined oil, some chopped up room temperature butter, and to this, I'm gonna add some Italian or pizza seasoning. Now, if you want to know my recipe for the pizza seasoning, then you can click on the I button and check the card. 
Otherwise, you can click on the link given in the description bar down below or check it on my website. So just mix everything together and your garlic flavored butter oil is ready. Okay, finally, the last thing that you're gonna need is some Reggiano Parmigiano or Parmesan cheese. Now, it's totally optional to use it, but it really works well with the deep dish pizza and it's what Domino's uses. Now, time to check our dough balls and you can see that they have doubled in size. Now, generally deep dish pizzas are made on this sort of a pizza pan, which I'm sure everybody might not be having. But what you may have at your home is a simple round baking tray. So I'm going to use this in my video. And the process is actually very simple. Just apply your garlic flavored butter oil at the bottom of the baking tray. And don't be shy here, apply a lot. Further, add in your grated parmesan cheese. And now we need to make our pizza base. So I've taken some cornmeal. And if you don't have cornmeal, you can use your simple all-purpose flour mixed with some semolina or suji. So rolling is pretty simple. Make sure you dust the cornmeal on both the sides of the dough. And then roll it with your rolling pin. Now what you will be able to notice is that I have kept my dough a little thick and this is the key here. You don't need to make a very thin dough nor a very thick dough. Alright, transfer your pizza base onto the baking tray. Make sure you tuck the pizza base properly to the sides of the baking tray otherwise your pizza will not be able to grow. Apply a little bit more of that garlic butter oil on the sides. It will help the pizza to come out of the baking tin easily. Then apply the pizza sauce, lots of cheese, further comes in the topping and now you're ready to bake the pizza. So if you're baking the pizza in an OTG or an oven, then make sure it's preheated for a minimum of 10 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius. And if you're using a microwave on a convection mode, then again make sure that it's preheated at 230 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 10 minutes. Now just bake for 10 to 12 minutes and, and that's it. And if you're using a microwave on a convection mode, then again the timing is exactly the same. But make sure you use a tall rack and then keep your baking tray. This looks amazing, isn't it? But the hard part here is to take the pizza out of the baking tray. So what I do is that I run a knife on the edges. And then with the help of my offset ladle, try to take my pizza out of the baking tray. So there you go guys, you can see that it's a little deep dish and that baking tray with the help of the sides really helped the pizza to become a little thick. So there you go guys, how to make Domino's deep dish pizza and as always you'll find all the list of ingredients and their measurements on my website. And yes, I started my Hindi channel in which I will be the next video on the day. So please subscribe Do subscribe here as well and if you like the video do give it a thumbs up. Until then, I'll see you all next week.